I am Casey with Casey's Paint Shop and we are in Burleson, Texas. Um, I've always grown up in body shop life more or less than anything. Uh, worked at my dad's shop since I was a little kid. Um, wanted to paint, didn't have the patience for body work, but you kind of had to do both to get to be the painter. Um, you can only go so far working for your dad. Uh, it's just a one-man shop anyway, so it's just me and him. I went on to work at other shops, became a painter, and uh, wanted my own shop doing restoration, doing the collision work. It wasn't really for me. I didn't enjoy it. Just kind of putting the car back the way it was wasn't very exciting for me. Um, for some people, I guess it's okay, but for me, it just I had a different path that I wanted to go down. Um, kind of started Casey's Paint Shop on the side and that was like 20 years ago now I think. Did work on the side and then kind of got to where my side money was making more than my job so I decided to do my shop full time and realized that just because you can do the work doesn't mean you can run the business. Then got to the point where I had to go back to work for somebody because uh, I wasn't making any money. And did that twice actually and then got fed up with it and sold all the cars that I built myself um, and sold my first house. And I built my, uh, bought my second house and built a shop at my house. And that's kind of where it landed. Then I thought, well, I should maybe get a job that has uh, 401k and insurance and everything now that I have kids. So I went to work for Coca-Cola and then got a call one night from uh, Aaron to see if I wanted to do a television show. Kind of thought they were all a little crazy about that, but went in uh, the next day and checked that out and then quit Coca-Cola that afternoon. So it kind of expedited everything, I guess, in a way. I mean, being on television kind of gives you exposure that you can't get anywhere else. So even though people kind of look at you and think, oh, you're the best or whatever. It's like, you know, there's people out there better than we are, can do more than we can. They just didn't get the opportunity that we did, which I'm grateful for. It's awesome. I mean, I am where I am today because of that. Um, I don't know that I would go back and do it again. It was so much time away from home and family and everything else. But, you know, like I said, I wouldn't be where I am today without it. So no regrets. So whenever I got the call to be asked if I would do the show, I didn't really know what to expect about it. And when we were only guaranteed three months and 12 episodes, was it 12? No, six episodes. Six. <laughs> so six episodes. Um, I was unsure about it. I didn't know if I wanted to go through with it. And my wife told me that she thought I would regret it for the rest of my life if I didn't do it. So because of her, I even did it. Um, we had no idea that it was going to go on as long as it did. Um, didn't know what to expect out of it when we started. Um, really had no idea what we were getting ourselves into. It, we worked so long and so many hours in the very beginning trying to prove ourselves that I think we kind of screwed ourselves and set ourselves up for what was to be expected the entire run of it. So where we thought we were probably just proving ourselves to get the show when it never stopped production. Because we thought it was going to be filmed for three months and then we were all gonna have to go figure out what the hell to do. And then if it got picked up, we were gonna come back. Well, before we even finished filming the six, they picked it up. So we had already set that pace of what we could do that it never got the opportunity to be like, okay, that's what we're gonna do that again. It just never stopped. And the expectations just kept getting set higher and higher and higher because it not only do you, you build these cars but you don't want to look like you're doing the same damn thing over and over and over. So then you're trying to break the mold, do something a little different. Well, doing something a little different and you've never done it or it's never been done only takes more time, which means more hours, but we weren't getting any more time to build the cars. So that meant just longer days. The GT was like right there towards the end of whenever I did, cause I only painted half that car. That's the, I quit that day. I was painting that, what was that car that I was painting? The convertible? Was it Cadillac? Yeah, it was 
I was painting that car when I quit. The booth was running when I left. <laughs> Here you go, f her. it's all yours now. See you later. I remember that. I was painting that f car. I had sealed it. I'd walked over to the other shop. I was in my paint suit. And the fing hydraulic line blew off that cut dog. And I walked away. I'm like, I'm not cleaning that shit up. I'm a paint suit. Like, I was just, I walked over here just like killing time between that shit. Walked in there to go mix paint. And two minutes later, the whole fing shop and Richard were standing out there and he asked me to come over and talk. I walked out, went red, grabbed my shit, threw in the bed of my truck, put my toolbox in there, strapped that bitch down and left. Didn't say bye to nobody. Never went back. Dude, Eddie and Rebecca were begging my ass to go back. I was, I told them, the off. I said, I'm not going back. So you have to do an exit scene. I do. I ain't going back. Do for two weeks. They said, just take two weeks off, relax, and we'll call you. They called me back after that two weeks, and I was, they were like, can you go back and do an exit? No. And they fucking begged and pleaded enough. I went back and did my exit. I was there, what, 30 minutes? Walked in, fuck you, I'm out, got my shit and fucking left. I didn't talk to anybody there except you, Aaron, and Keenan. That's it. Um, got to meet a lot of cool people, got opportunities to do things that I would have never gotten to do before. Um, because of the show, people know who we are when we go places, and vendors know who we are, and just the opportunities that that brings would never have. I'd probably still be working at Coca-Cola or working at some body shop spraying cars on the weekends if it wasn't for this. So, like I said, there, there's no regrets. I mean, the show was, it was what it was. Like, I don't even know how to explain it to somebody because unless you actually, unless you actually go through it, you can't really even under, I could explain it to you all day long, but until you really live it, you, you have no idea what it was like, you know? Looking from the outside in, everybody thinks, oh man, you're on TV, that's so awesome. And it was cool when the right situation was there, but whenever it wasn't and nobody was there to make it fun in a way and it was just work, it was work and it was, we have to be done by morning or this car's gotta go by tomorrow or whatever and it didn't matter how many hours you had to work or what you had to pull out of your ass to make it happen or I would, hell, I'd show up at three o'clock in the morning to paint cars and then stay till nine o'clock that night doing whatever and then drive an hour home, take a nap and a shower, and then drive an hour back to be there at four or five o'clock that morning to finish up whatever, and they didn't show that on television, but, I mean, I think we got what was coming to us in a way. I, you know, like, I don't know, what's the word that I would, you would call that, really? Like, there was a lot of risk and there was some reward. There's some good rewards at the end, but what it took to get there, there was just so much I mean, you could write a f***ing book on this. Like, there's a documentary. I think if you got all the original guys together, I mean, we would have, I think you could make like an hour and a half movie that would fill the seats <laughs> with the stories and the shit and all the stuff that you've seen. And I don't know, it was a, in the beginning, it was fun. Like, it was, it was sucked because it was what it was, but it was like the core guys. And then for me, the, the where that show changed for me where it was like I'm having fun this is kicking ass I mean even though the hours were long we were having fun like we we're in the parking lot smoking tires going take an hour and a half lunches like because we knew we were gonna be there till two o'clock in the morning so like let's take a long lunch and relax and like go to me casino or wherever we were going left the show thought you know obviously you get I wouldn't necessarily say big-headed but when you have more emails sent to you for work that you can answer, you think, well, we could just have this big badass shop and just, you know, take over the hot rod world, I guess, in a way. So we ended up getting 10,000 square foot, and then we got the building across from it. We had 20,000 square foot. I had like 13 employees, a social media person, a personal, like, kind of assistant office dude. My wife was working there. We had more people than we needed, and it got to the point where I couldn't work and then just kind of was losing the vibe for the whole thing. Um, shop morale was down, my morale was down, and just couldn't handle it. So first of 2020, I fired my entire shop. Um, worked me and one of my part-time guys that's a firefighter. We worked for a few months by ourselves, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. 
um, and the building that we're in right now was a dance studio and I was spending all the, I had bought this, the Lube Center and Car Wash, and was spending all their rent money to keep this building going because wiring was bad, AC was bad, plumbing was bad. So her lease was up and um, I didn't renew it. I gutted the building and built this shop. And during that time I'd hired a couple people and um, moved into here. And now it's just me, Keenan. I have two body guys and this is it. I love it. First one here about five o'clock in the morning and I usually leave about eight. I like being here. Guys are awesome. The shop's nice. Being air conditioned and heated kind of doesn't wear you out. Texas is terrible um, in the summers because not only do you have the heat, but you got a lot of humidity also. So it's just, like I said, that helps with morale. We're not all beat up. We work four days a week and um, we work five or seven to 5.30. And the guys live within 30 minutes of here. So they're home at six o'clock, have dinner and then Friday home, they can do whatever they want and then spend the weekend with the kiddos. So that's it. That's, this is where we're at right now. I'll let you know things change. Ha, ha, ha.